Hello everyone. Welcome to my bio class. As we all have come to 10th standard, the first chapter of our bio is chapter 6, Life Processes. Let's go to the basics. In the 9th standard, last year we had the first chapter of bio, that is the fundamental unit of life. As we all know, a cell, it is the basic structure of life. When all these cells, a group of cells come together, it forms a tissue. There are different tissues present in our whole body. So, when these tissues combine together, they form muscles. So, from a cell to a tissue to a muscle. Then this muscle forms the muscular system which is present in our body. The muscular system is present, but into the muscular system, there is a bony framework that is called the skeleton. So, it is a skeletal system. As we all know, there are 206 bones present in our body. So, the endoskeleton is made up of all the bones. So, this is how a human body is. But, the human body is not constant. If we are surviving, then we are living a life. We are taking in oxygen, we are leaving out carbon dioxide. We are eating food. We are performing all the life processes. So, how does all this take place? For each function, there are different organs present in our body. Again, going back to the basics. In ninth standard, in ninth chapter, in the ninth standard of the seventh chapter, diversity in living organisms, there was a characteristic feature known as level of organization. On this basis, each organism is placed in different classes, whether it is cellular level, tissue level, organ level, or organ system level. There are some organisms, the primitive organisms, which come into the cellular level. Then the advanced one, they come in the tissue level. Then later on comes the organ level, which have only the organs present in our body. And the final one, the most extraordinary or the most advanced form is the organ system level, which we as human beings, the animal, the whole animal kingdom possesses organ level system of organization. See, for example, in our family there are five members and you cannot expect a single person to do the whole work present in the family, in the house, the course which we see. For example, the mother, your mother does cooking, the father goes to the market, children keep their clothes, grandmother cleans the vegetables. So, the, each member of a family does different functions and a single person cannot do all these functions together. In the same way, as we see in our whole body, there are different organs which do dif perform different functions. And when these organs perform different functions, there are different processes taking place in our life. For carrying out these processes, for carrying out these functions, there are different systems. So different systems perform different functions. The very first is the digestive system. The second one is respiratory system. Next, circulatory system. Or transportation system. Next, excretory system. Nervous system. Reproductive system. Each 
system performs different functions and for that there are particular organs for performing all these processes. So the functions which are performed by different different body parts or organs, they all are categorized as life processes. And we are going to see in this chapter the different life processes which are taking place in our body day to day. Now, digestive system. This for the best word suitable for digestion is food. So taking in food, getting energy and that energy is utilized by the different parts of our body and we get energy and we can perform our daily activities. Next is respiratory system. You might be wondering why I wrote life. See, when we take in oxygen and we release oxygen, when, when we release carbon dioxide, there is the inhalation and exhalation taking place that is respiration. But without the breath, we cannot survive. So that's why I've written life. Sick next is circulatory system. Blood. Here we see the flow of blood in our different capillaries, vessels, blood vessels, or the veins, arteries, in from the heart to the whole parts of our body. And up, apart from blood, in blood, blood is a connective tissue, as we know. But with this, it carries the oxygen, the food, but materials, the minerals throughout the body, etc. Next is excretory system. Excretion means removal of waste. That's why I wrote waste. The removal of waste materials. After we eat, after we consume something, the energy is utilized by our body. The remaining metabolic waste which are present in our body are eliminated. Then next, the nervous system, which only does control and coordination. The whole control and coordination of our body, how our organs should work. As we know, we have the brain as a master gland, as it helps us, helps the whole body to function properly. Next is reproductive system, which means production of new individuals, which are genetically similar to the parents. Then. As we can see, digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system and excretory system. These four systems we are going to study in this chapter. Whereas compared to these two, nervous system and reproductive system, regarding these two, we are going to study in detail, in complete description in the rest of the chapters. But as we know there are life processes, so for your understanding I have written all the life processes. So let's start with the first system that is digestive system. Okay, now as we all know you are now in 10th standard. But 15 years ago, you were infants, you were very small, you were like babies. All of a sudden, from babies, from infants, you have come to an adolescent stage, to this level. In 15 years, how come these changes came into your body? So, day by day, year by year, month by month, you are growing. Development is taking place in your body. So, first fact. Second thing, we all like to have fun. We all like to do something sportive. For example, you all like, you are all waiting for one period in the whole day that is sports period. When you all go to sports period, you completely involved in the sports. You keep on doing activities and you run, you play, you shout, you scream. And in all this, you are performing some activities. For this, you require energy. 
So in order to gain energy, to grow, to develop and to maintain a state of order in our body, we require food. So the food which we consume, that is we take nutrition. The food which we consume, there are different types of nutrients as you know carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, etc. and water and roughages. So, when we consume these nutrients, we are taking nutrition and when we are taking this nutrition in our body, we get energy. The food which passes through our body, it enters the mouth, it goes in, into and when the food particles are split up, which are divided from complex to simpler and later on the food molecules contain energy and when it is supplied to all parts of our body, that time we get energy. So, how does this take place? Let's see. Before starting that, let me clear you. There are two different organisms or two different ways of taking nutrition. First is autotrophic and the second one heterotrophic. You might be wondering that in if our organism is taking nutrition, there are different types of taking nutrition into our body. Not only autotropic and heterotropic, these are the main under which in heterotropic we see saprophytic, sporozytic, holozoic and different types of nutrition. But in this chapter we are going to focus on these two. Now, in this word we can see auto, which means self. So, an organism which takes food or which takes nutrition by itself, it does not need to depend on others and it uses sunlight, that is photo, that is light and the inorganic substances such as the elements which are present in the air like carbon dioxide, water and sunlight. When these organisms take all these nutrients and take all these essential materials, they form their own food. So this is called autotrophic mode of nutrition. And the organisms which are performing such nutrition, they are called as autotrophs. Next is heterotrophic nutrition which means an organism which depends on other organisms for its food, for its survival. Now, as we saw in our, we saw in ninth standard in diversity in living organisms, we saw various organisms. So, some are some monarchs, some are protestants, fungi, plantae and animalia, the five major kingdoms of the, the five major kingdoms. In that, we see the plantae kingdom and protestant and monarchs, they come into autotrophic. Then the fungi and the animalia, they come into heterotrophic mode of nutrition. In animalia kingdom, we saw some of the worms which are parasitic. Parasitic in the sense, they depend on other organisms, not only for their food, but also for their survival and also for their development. The best example is leech. So leech does not depend, uh, does not have its nutrition on its own. It depends on other organisms for its survival, for its growth and for its food and for its development. 